welcome to this look at new mods on Farming Simulator 19 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's Friday again, the 26th of March. We have new mods and we have some updates. The updates are as follows. Top left, the open chicken coop by SN Modding LSMT Modding Team. The New Holland Versatile by Hemerson Dentino A Miotto Modding. The Valmet 88 by Holtz FS. The Zetor 120 45 16 145 pack by Kastan 18 and Pushcap. The Farmtech EDK 800 by Kastan 18. The Large Grain Storage by Didec 96. And the Cow Shed by SN Modding LSMT Modding have all had updates today. In front of me, I've got the Cobblestone by ICAS, 2.16 megabytes download. These are one slot each. There's a large, I mean, it's brick paving, cobblestone, however you want to refer to it. There's the sort of terracotta, salmon, and then there's the grey. We have a large section and a small section of each. Placing these, you can actually line them up and place them really close together, or you can actually overlap them. If you overlap them a little bit, the seam, well, obviously, if you overlap them a little bit, needs than I did, but is almost seamless which is quite handy one thing i was curious about was whether you could place on top of these and it wouldn't let me but what i did was put a small building further around just as a test and then use this as almost like a landscaping around it and it worked no problem at all um you have to be careful of things like cell points and triggers the vehicle i was using a vehicle workshop and where the actual workshop trigger was it didn't want to place one of these sections so it'll be a bit of trial and error but they look very nice they're under placeables and decoration so we've got the small red cobblestone and the large or big red cobblestone then we've got the small gray cobblestone and big gray let's say one slot each 20 40 20 40 and pretty straightforward to place that's by ICAS next we've got the mushrooms by Bartson V3 1.23 megabytes download also one slot each and for one slot you get one little section like this there are four different types to choose from these are just a decorative object depends what storyline you're going for also under decoration Mushroom type 1, 2, 3 and 4. These are 5 pounds, euros or dollars each. Let's say they're one slot and just place them wherever you want in clusters and it'll, you know, or be patches of their own. However you want to do it is entirely up to you. That's the Mushrooms by Bartson V3. Next, we have got the US Hay Silo. This is by AJ Farmer. 2.78 megabytes download and three slots on console. Price isn't too bad either. It's 250,000 litre capacity of hay and straw. Putting in is done there. Taking out is done under here. Nicely detailed, nicely textured. Nice bit of weathering here and there around it. This is under silos. So 90 grand for 250,000 litres of each hay or straw. That's by AJ Farmer. Next, we've got the Manure Storage Pack. This is by Casper. These are nine slots each, and there's quite a few of these to choose from. It's just a place for putting, if you've been mucking out and there's not somewhere, or you just want to place somewhere different to put your muck down. We have loads of different sizes, and each size we've got two different options. We've got with a base plate, which is cracked and got a few kind of muddy patches, or without a base plate, which has got this kind of just muddy earth, a few little cracks here and there, and a bit of water. And then we've got, a, as we go up in the sizes, the wall size changes as well. We've got a slightly larger wall size at the back there too. Again, nicely detailed, nicely textured, nice bit of weathering. These are under miscellaneous, I think they were. Yep. So we start with a five by five by one. So five by five with a one meter height on the wall. With plate, without plate, then a 6x6 one, with and without, 7x7, 8x8, 9x9, 10x10. And then we go on to a slightly higher one, which is the 5x5x1.5. And we go through the same sizes in those 5x5, um, 6x6, 7x7, 8x8, 9x9, and a 10x10. Prices aren't too bad either. 
Um, and like I say, there are nine slots each. I'm pretty sure that was a 10 by 10. This might be a 9 by 9. But as you can see, the difference in the wall height, 1 metre and 1.5. That's the manure storage pack. 4.34 megabytes download. That's by Casper. Next up, we have got the Tin Barn. This is by Polish Pavelk 20. It is seasons ready. 4.59 megabytes download. Nine slots on console. Yeah, a little bit of a grass texture, which I'm pretty sure with landscaping, if you if you don't want it with grass, like here it's on concrete, you can probably texture that out. There is lighting. And the light switch is the back here. Drive through. If you want it to be. I think that door opens as well. And that full one should open. There we go. This is under sheds. The tin barn is 20,125. Slot count will drop down from 9 to 1. So I'll be 9 for the first one. Someone asked the other day actually what, the, what I meant when I kept saying it will drop down to. The first one of anything is always a higher slot count because the game has to render that in with all its detail. Any subsequent one, any duplicate after that, it doesn't require as much memory space to do that, so the slot count drops down, and it won't require as many slots to put duplicates on. That's what I mean when I'm referring to that. Um, right. That's my Polish Pavelk 20. Rushing through here. We have also got behind us the pack of Brazilian warehouses. 11.35 megabytes download by FBT Modding. They're five slots each. Lighting is automatic, so I haven't got to worry about finding light switches. We've got two different sorts here. We've got one that looks like this, and then we've got an open one, so more of a barn and a shelter. And then this comes with various options. You can have it with just this main barn bit. You can have it with that and one side shelter. You can have it with that and two side shelters, which is what I went for. And the same with the other one behind it. You can have the main section on its own. You can have it one side shelter or two side shelters. Now, like I said, lighting is automatic. I thought it was a door at the back. I thought oh, I'll nip through the back and, but no, that was my fault. Nice detailing, nice brickwork, plenty of room, nice big opening at the front for getting in and out. Loads of shelter space under the sides as well. This is under, of course it's under sheds. So the closed storage without extension is 33 grand, five slots. Closed storage with one extension, 38 grand. And then the one I went for was the closed storage with two extensions for 43 grand. So as you can see the progression through and then the open storage, 20 grand with one extension, 25 grand with two extensions, 30 grand. So not too expensive. When you consider the size of it as well, not bad at all. Which brings me on to the next of the mods. So that was by um, FBT Modding. We've got the Cow Shed. This is by DMI 20mm Normandy. It is 14.97 megabytes download. 26 slots on console. It will hold 200 cows, but I have encountered a problem. It does have a list of instructions on the Farming Simulator website mod hub for this. Nicely made, nicely detailed. It's a huge building. Your dialogue box is here. Now you can access the dialogue box without opening the doors, but the doors do open here. And like I said, it will hold 200. We'll close that. Now the instructions say, I'm going to read this, adding straw can be done in the middle of the stable. This is the middle. The middle of the stable. Near the front door. This is the front door milk tank side now i've tried i've tried this side i've tried that side i've tried this end i've tried that end i've tried inside this door i cannot get it to take straw i can't get a straw trigger to come up i've tried with straw pellets as well can't get a trigger to come up now it could be it's a really narrow trigger it could be it's not here it could be i'm just missing it but i have tried loads of different options and i can't get the straw to come up it does then go on to say uh, feeding and water is possible in the middle of the cow shed now I got that trigger came up literally just here. So for total mix ration and water, the trigger was just inside the door as I came in. 
I just can't find the straw one. So that is where your milk is coming out of. It then goes on to say that manure can be removed and added using the second door from the front left. Now I would have said that's the first door, that's the second, but that one opens and that looks like an area, if you put a light on, that looks like it could have some straw in it, which is likely where the straw is supposed to go and that's where the manure is going to appear. It does say you need a skid steer with a small bucket for mucking out because it needs to be something small to get into here because this door doesn't open. So that has to be the door, second door to the left. So I'm not quite sure why the straw trigger is not working. But as we go through, and we get to the middle section, there would be a cow here. You've got this section that drops down. If I press circle here, that raises up. So when you're cleaning out, when you're feeding, you can put that down and you can have it drive through. But normally that would be up to allow the cows access all the way around as an open shed for them to be able to go wherever they want. The other thing as well is I haven't found a light switch. I have been looking. I did look down the sides. I did wonder if there was a, a switch for the blinds or something like that. Um, but I haven't found one either. Slurry is at the back. And it refers to slurry. Oh yeah, oh yeah, water I've done. That trigger was down the front. So slurry's here. Now that doesn't have to be opened. It does say the slurry trigger is available without opening the slurry door. But if you have the manure system active, open the door. You can use it as intended. So if you're on PC and you're using the... Uh, manure system it will allow you to so yeah um it, yeah it's, it's, it's a nice mod i'm not i'm just like i say if you if you've got the straw trigger to work if if you've located it it's just weird that all the other ones came up no problem at all but that one i just can't seem to find then stick it in the comments let me know where it is it's always annoying when you can't find one uh, under animal pens it's three hundred thousand to buy Slot count will drop down from 26 to 2 for any sub subsequent ones you buy. It may well get an update, you may need one. It may not, it may just be an error I've made, um, potentially. Uh, the Cow Shed 3 plus 3 by DMI 20mm Normandy. Moving on from there, we've got the Wilson Pace Setter Spread Axle. I think that's right. And this is different to the normal standard in-game Wilson pace setter because it's got a spread axle at the rear. It is a belly dump. It is split into two 30,000 litre sections, so you can put two lots of different things in, or just put the both in. Same thing in both sides. That's entirely up to you. The website picture shows, and again, this could be a PC thing, I'm not sure. Look at the pictures. It does look like the rear axle is steering. But I... I haven't had any option to come up at all to get that to steer at all. I don't know. Again, I'm not sure if I'm missing something, but I have had a really good look and I can't seem to find anything. This is 9.05 megabytes download. 10 slots on console. It's by Whiskey Sierra Modding. You'll find it under Tools and Trailers. Right at the very end. Same capacity, same price. It won't do everything. It will do the main crop types and seed and was it fertilizer it said there? We can change the main colour to anything on that palette. There are loads to choose from. Metallics and candies and things like that. Uh, rim colour, anything on that palette. We've got a chrome, stainless steel, zinc. A few tyres. Then the gap between the spread axle, we have got no toolbox or toolbox if you wish to have it. Those are the options. I will hook up to it and open my help menu. I've got my side panel plugged into my PlayStation, which allows me to jump straight in and out of the menu. I do have people still ask. I know people are getting annoyed and frustrated with me keep saying it, but I do still have people asking how I'm doing it, so I will explain. Um, select tool will switch between the vehicle and the trailer. L1, open cover. Does your open cover, same as usual. R1, I can do tip side front or tip side rear for the two belly dumps. L1, R1, unload here. I've got nothing at all that says anything about that rear rear axle. Unless my eyesight's really that bad that I'm just seeing something on the pictures that I that isn't actually there. But yeah, I, I haven't got any option for that. So yeah, 
Um, in essence, it's a split rear axle um, and with a few different colour options and choices compared to the standard in-game version. Let's just close that off. The Wilson Pace Setter Spread Axle by Whiskey Sierra Modding. Moving on from there, we've got this. I like this one. This is cool. This has got some nice, well, one nice feature in particular, but it looks quite cool too. The Tatra Phoenix L Crane. This is by HR Forst and Farzoigbao. 15.37 megabytes download, 27 slots on console. It's an L Crane. It does have a fifth wheel attached on the back, so you can put any logging trailers and stuff on you want. It also has an optional trailer attacher as well, so you can put other things on. If you don't want to go for a semi-trailer, you can go for a regular trailer if you want to. And then the logging crane. Again, I know people don't get on well with the logging cranes. I don't always like to use them, but it is here. You can use it. Some nice options on this one as well. We'll have a look at those first. Under vehicles and forestry machines. 135,000 to buy, starts at 462 horsepower but does go up. Slot count will drop down from 27 to 2. We can change the rim colour to anything on that palette. Loads of different options to choose from. Main colour to anything on that palette. Then design colour does the crane. Um, let's just pick something. Just want metallic orange on that. Is your design colour. Then configuration. We have got standard with trailer hitch. I think it goes back to standard again. It's one of those menus. Yep. So standard or trailer hitch for your configuration. Then wheel brand. We've got Lizard and we've got Nokian. Those are the two options. With no other options within those, you just get one or the other. Then at the front, we've got bull bar. No. Yes. With lights and off again. And then we've got engine set up 462 horsepower and then 650 horsepower for an extra eight grand on top. Those are the options. We'll hop in. Right, let's go in cab. I think probably because I was on the, maybe it put me on the crane, maybe? That's weird. Anyway, right, camera's fine now. So, lights. Then the rear lights. Beacons. Horn. It doesn't have any opening doors or windows. Interior. Nicely detailed. Now, that's gone from outside camera to inside camera. We then have a crane camera and a further away crane camera. Now, I particularly like this one because when you open it up, it puts you in the crane seat. So what we'll do now is we'll put it back onto crane. L1 and X opens the seat and puts you in the seat. And that camera angle, I like. That's pretty cool. If we go to the next one, still you but a little bit further out I just I don't know I, I like that one that's pretty cool so what we're going to do now is open the crane L1 and right stick up and down we'll do that actually you know what we'll go out to the next one so we can see the crane I'll press it down. and then side to side so L1 and right stick side to side and up and down then Right stick, sorry, R1 and right stick. We'll give us actually, let's go a bit further that way. So, R1 and right stick up and down gives us that movement, and side to side gives us the extension. Then, L1, R1 up and down on the stick opens and closes the grab, and side to side rotates the crane head. So back in to that one. Yeah, I don't know. Something about that. Just I, I like that a lot. Uh, what we have also got is if I switch now to control group two for extras, we can where is it? Rotate crane tool. Oh, I'm going to have to switch to that. If we go side to side it opens up the legs yeah that's probably not the best angle is it <laughs> let's do it externally you better see l1 r1 that's better for you to see for me i, I like the other version but obviously we're showing off the module what is around so l1 r1 if we go side to side 
we can raise and lower the support legs. If we go up and down, we can move the fifth wheel attacher. So depending on what you're towing, you can move it into position. But you need to be on control group extras to operate both of those things. If I go back to crane. Now, if I fold the crane now, it puts the seat away, L1 and X, but doesn't put the crane away. So this is another one of those ones that you have to actually fold the crane up first and then you hop out the seat. But it's, yeah, it's a nice, nice version. Swing it around. And make sure I'm lined up. For their one and X. Tatra Phoenix L Crane by HR Forst and Fazoig Bow. Very nice. Next, we have got the. Want to get this right? Maestra. Maestra pack. This is by Nico Pix and Nico Do 55. We've got quite a few different trailers in this pack. Hopefully, I'm going to get all this in. Um, we have got the Maestra Atlas. We've got the Maestra Dump. We've got the. Matra Vulcane 200 in a single axle or a double axle and then we've got three different types of bale trailers we've got a 9 metre length, I think that's the 10 we've got a 9, a 10 and a 12 which all take different amounts of bales there's a square and a round bale version of each and you can have it without or with auto load function, so either one of those choices you can go for Nicely detailed. The Atlas, if you go for the very large one like this, the silage configuration, that will only take forage crops. Other than that, it will take the indicated ones. We'll have a look in a second. Um, but it's really nicely detailed. The reason I'm in front of this one is the dump trailer. Now, this may be a feature that's been on other dump trailers I've just never noticed before. But these are on a, on a swivel, uh, like a pivot. So when you brake or drive, they swing. So I suppose in case you hit them on something, they fold up out of the way rather than breaking off. Um, I just noticed it on the way I thought it was really cool so we'll have a look at them all and then we'll use a couple of actually we need to use at least three of them don't we the first two you will find under tools and trailers oh this pack yeah I must say this first the Matra pack is um, 57.95 megabytes to download the first two the Atlas 18 is 30,300 for the base model 10 no 16 slots and then the Matra Dump is 43,500, and that is 10 slots. So 16 and 10 slots, respectively. It will take all those crop types, as will that. But like I said, with this one, if we go up to the largest configuration, it then only becomes a forage trailer. But we can change the main colour from the red to the kind of yellowy orange. Egg yolk, I guess. Configuration standard, 24,200 litres. Grain bodywork, 29,200 litres, or silage bodywork, 39,000 litres. And then back again. Wheel brand, Michelin, Trelleborg, Mitus, Nokian, and Lizard. Did we start with Lizard? Um, quite a few different options within those. Actually, we'll zoom in a little bit. I won't say them all, because there are quite a few, but we've got some different tyre choices amongst Lizard, Michelin, Trelleborg, Mitres is just standard, that tread pattern, and then Nokian standard with that tread pattern, and the dump, same options for colour, we can have an 18 tonne at 10,800 litres, we can have a 21 tonne at 12,760, Michelin, Trelleborg, Mitres, Nokian and Lizard, Again, a few different tyre options within all of those. And back again. Uh, this one is under manure spreaders. So the Metro Vulcane 200 Simple, 35,500. Now, the interesting thing about this is, well, I suppose it would be a different price because if you're going for a single axle to a double axle, capacity is identical. Although, worryingly, 
we are going to see if this works in a minute. It does say horsepower requirement is 2,000 horsepower. I think that's supposed to be 200. I hope it's 200. 21,000 litre capacity on both of them. Uh, 11 slots each. 12 metre spread. Options available. We can change the main colour again. Configuration standard. All with bodywork. So 19,000 litre or 21,000. And then we've got... On the single axle, the tyre choices are a little bit different because they're a single, they're a little bit more knobbly. But we do have some forward reverse and slightly wider ones on these as well. Again, there's quite a few to choose from. I would advise, come in, have a look and have a flick through. You're going to find a tyre that you like. And then the Volcane double axle is 49,500. Same capacity, same horsepower requirement um, and 12 metre spread width. Difference with this is configuration the same but the difference is it's a twin axle uh, with a few different tire choice options on that uh, we'll check those out first i think and then we'll have a look at the bale trailers i just wanted to show you the the um on this one the lights because it just i just suddenly thought wow that's cool that would be cool seeing that before see him swinging because I put the lights on, I thought, hang on a minute, I can't really see them. But what's cool is when they swing, you notice the reflection? Swinging with it. I like that as a feature. I think that's pretty cool. And then we'll grab the muck spreader. Because I haven't got 2,000 horsepower, so I'm hoping this is going to be enough. Just check out its operation. L1LX opens it up, ready for operation. Nicely detailed all around it. On the back end especially, the flinging part. Turn it on. 12 metres. Does the job. And doesn't require 2,000 horsepower. That's very nice. I do like all the kind of, well, could be plasma cutters, but laser cut metal sections and things on it. It looks very cool. So then we've got the bale trailers. Now, if you've seen me operate bale trailers, auto low bale trailers before, I think it works pretty much the same as all the ones we've had before. The very large 12, 12 metre is a swivel front axle. The 9 and 10 are a straight solid axle. Uh, axle connector so the axles are at the back with a solid connector at the front on the 9 and the 10 on the 12 you've got a swivel front axle so all the weights on the three point here but on the larger one you've got the front axle that helps with that um, right so open up the help window the moment we're in transport position so what we'll do is put it into operating position and it'll put them all on this one holds 32 square bales. Now, as is often the case, and I've mentioned it before, these are at the moment ethereal bales. They don't technically exist. They have no weight. If I turn, nothing really happens because they don't really exist. To make them exist and have mass, you have to unload them onto the trailer. If I put straps on now, they won't go over the bales because the bales don't exist. So what I need to do is unload bales. Unload bales, L1 and triangle. It'll say unload bales here, and you'll notice they'll drop onto the trailer. They now have weight and mass, and I can now put the straps over them. And this then will handle much differently. To unload them, I need to put them back into operating position. It reloads them all automatically. Unload bales, and now I can move them side to side. It doesn't allow me to put them up or down, though, which is fine for square bales to some extent. I've tried different options here but you just have to unload here and it drops them to the floor as you can see we've lost one round bales isn't going to be too bad like this because they're upright but you are likely to lose some especially if you're not on flat ground now with the trailer we'll look at the options in a minute we have the creel sections and if we do r1 and right stick we can fold those down for transport if we want to or we don't have to have them at all in all honesty disconnect from that one and the round bales works exactly the same way. 
We can unload them. I wonder how many we're going to lose by unloading. I think I left these ethereal. I don't think I put them as real. Yeah, unload bales. L1 and triangle. Swing them across, whichever way I want to do it. Swing them so we can see. Still an option for let me go up or down with those. Unload bales here. It's not the tidiest. But then that's this an auto load trailer, so you can always just reload them again and pick them back up. So transport position, then operating position. This is the much larger one. This will do 45 round bales. So that's the operation. Um, when there's no bales on it, you can do the same thing with the creels. You can fold the creels up at the end. Um, so under baling technology. We have got the PMF 160 SP 9 meter square and the PMF 160 SP 9 meter round. Options available, same thing with the colours. Auto load no or yes. We'll set up standard narrow tyres or wide tyres. Then folding mechanism, you can have no. Square bells ladder at the front, both. Round bells ladder at the front, both or off. Back to standard again and that's the same on the square and the round ones all the way through all of the options all of these the options are exactly the same it's just the amount of bales they hold so the nine meter will do 28 square bales it will do 35 round bales the 10 meter will do 32 square bales and 40 round bales and the 12 meter will do 40 by uh, 40 square bales and 45 round bales but in essence all the, the other options are all exactly the same five slots each for each of these trailers and then the slot count will drop down um but yeah interesting pack with a few different bits in there to be looking at we're going to look at those last i think yeah we'll get these out of the way so next we have got the sip spady 3k12 by wolfex modding it's uh 3.99 megabytes download three slots on console it's a 1.2 meter i think it's 1.2 meter 1.2 meter plow you'll find it under plows 250 to buy 20 horsepower required 1.5 meter sorry 1.5 meter runs at seven miles per hour there are no options available you get it in sip red Designed for small tractors, small farms. Does also have the option to create fields, as most ploughs do. L1 and triangle, then drop it down. And we can create our own fields, extending existing ones or making our own, should we wish to do so. It's a nicely detailed mod. I left that on. Whoops. But uh, yeah, the Spady 3K12 by Wolfex Modding. Next, we're going to look at this actually first. Actually, we're going to look at the, both these together, kind of. Um, this is the Magsy Interface by, I think it's Equip. Could be Equip, but I think it's Equip Modding. It is 0 0.55 megabytes download, one slot on console. This is an attachment for telehandlers to be able to have either a trailer hitch and or three point link so you can move machinery and equipment around in yards and that kind of thing store them or whatever you want to do with them um, so it just is the interface between the two that's what it's designed to do you'll find this under tools and telehandlers 1600 to buy the slot count is one anyway so that's fine we can change the main color from black to gray and then we can have it with or without the trailer hitch as well so it's three point link with or without trailer hitch um, the reason i'm showing you with this is because i'm going to show you both together so what we've also got here we'll see that in just a second um, is the fortrit b352 it's by aaa modding 3.94 megabytes download five slots on console i want to say this is the 1.2 meter this is a cultivator disc harrow you'll find it under disc arrows 2.1 80 horsepower required runs at nine miles per hour we can have it in fortress blue brown or green 
and normally it would be hooked onto a tractor, three point link mounted and you pull it along. But what I thought I would do, I know this is not what this is designed for, but just to show you both being used. Um, if I hook up now with the telehandler and the three point link, if I wanted to move this cultivator around in the yard, I can hook it up, I can move it around, place it where I need to, certain trailers and things as well but anything three point link mounted i can move them around now obviously this is not how you're supposed to use the cultivator but i thought while it's hooked up if we put it down like that to the ground we can still lower it l1 and circle lowers the cultivator and if i reverse now we are cultivating we shouldn't be cultivating <laughs> with the telehandler but you can see the cultivator does work as does the um magsy interface Let's raise that. If I go back now, because it's not raised, it won't continue cultivating. And I can lift up and go and put it away. Um, so that's kind of both of those uh, together. The Magsy interface by Keep Modding and the Fortress B352 by AAA Modding. Just click that. Did I leave that running? I did. Which brings me on to the last of the mods for today and indeed this week. There is a new map out today. My mind's gone blank as what it is. I think it's another Polish map. Uh, I went to do... Oh, what was the one yesterday? There were two. It was uh, Dabrówka. Dabrówka. I was, I was setting up to do it and it disappeared off the mod hub. <laughs> so I'm assuming that's going to come back at some point. Um, but there is another one. Begins with a P. Oh, man. Anyway, I will get onto that probably tomorrow morning. In front of me, we have the Lizard, Lizard the Beast. Lizard the Beast 1000. These look really cool. There's a load of features on these, and they look absolutely brilliant. This is by Agro Tonio. 9.22 megabytes download, 11 slots each. We've got a 4x4 and a 6x6. quite versatile too nice big back on this tension straps on the back the roof and the front different lighting options this one i think both actually we can have with a three-point link as well not too shabby these you'll find under vehicles and cars so the beast 1000 only 13,800 as well it says 81 horsepower but that actually changes, I think. So main colour, as you can see there, is blue at the moment. We can change it anything on this palette, and there are quite a few to choose from. Rim colour. Again, there's a whole load to choose from. And then design colour does the sort of pipe work. Uh, let's go for something that's going to stand out in opposition to, let's go with blue. So you can see the bits that changed. Although rim colour, I'm sure when I tried gunmetal, I think because they're black anyway, it just kind of, just does the, the very outer rim of it. Yeah. So then wheel brand options. We have got Nokian or Lizard. Zoom in a bit. So under Lizard, we've got Rim 1, 4x4, four four, Rim 2, 4x4, four four, Rim 1, 6x6, six six, Rim 1, 6x6, six six, so it's like a different internal, so that also then puts the rim colour on the middle as well. That's quite nice. And then back to Rim 1, 4x4. Four four. Then under Nokian, Rim 1, 4x4, four four, Rim 2, 4x4, four four, Rim 1, 6x6, six six, Rim 2, 6x6. Six that does look cool in that. Then we've got accessories. Standard platform with cover. We'll have a look at both, don't worry. So that's standard. Zoom out a little bit. Hang on. Standard platform with cover. Platform back to standard. Now if we go for the 4x4. Four four, standard platform with cover. Platform. Then design, standard. So standard comes like that. Again, we'll zoom in a bit. Light 2 puts a light bar rather than the round spotlights. Then you've got without lights. Grade 1 takes the rack off the front. 
and you can have it with normal lights or with the light bar. Then back to grade one, grade two, nothing and standard. So if you go for just the standard grade one or grade two, it takes the um, rack off the roof as well. So if you go for that, no rack on the front, no rack on the roof, no other additional light bar. So you can kind of break it right down to a fairly basic design as well. Attach your standard or rear hitch, which is three point. And then we have the beast, 1,060 kilometers per hour. Well, I suppose it's 81 horsepower regardless. It just ups the limiter, I guess. 60 kilometers an hour, 80 kilometers an hour, 100 kilometers an hour, 120 kilometers an hour. All your options. So I went with a 4x4, a 6x6, one with round lights, one with light bar. Uh, what else? Oh, that one's the standard configuration on the back. And that one I went with the, um, it says with cover. So you've got the rear bit there, but not an open platform. So, lights, horn, L1 and right stick up and down does the rear ramp, rear hatch, rear door. L1, R1 and right stick up and down does the left door. L1, R1 and right stick side to side does the other door. First person looks like this. It's very cool. It's very cool. These do shift a bit, 75 mile an hour. I'm not sure if I prefer the one with the light bar or not. The options are the same on this one. In that L1 and R1, right stick up and down, side to side will open the doors. R1 and right stick up and down, no, L1 and right stick up and down, does the rear tailgate. On both of these, we can do tension straps on or off, or we can do them individually if we want to. This one with the lights on, looks like that. I quite like that. I do like the light bars, but that's got a kind of menacing look to it. I didn't set myself up a jump today. But I, quite a very useful vehicle, I would think. The three-point link on the back as well. Nice large bed on it. A little bit like the Gators, just a slightly different kind of take on it I guess there you go the lizard the beast the lizard the beast lizard the beast 1000 by agro tonio I think that's it for today and for this week if you've stuck with me to the end thank you very much I really do appreciate it I appreciate if you watch my mod reviews every day if you watch all the rest of my stuff I really appreciate that too thank you very much um, I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. As always, thanks for watching.